The ECOWAS Court of Justice restrains the federal government from prosecuting Twitter users. And a federal lawmaker, Farouk Lawan, is sentenced to seven years imprisonment for taking bribes of $500,000. This is Plus Politics, and I am Osao Gye Ogbawa. Welcome once again to PLOS Politics. The ECOWAS Court of Justice in Abuja has restrained the federal government from imposing sanctions, harassing, intimidating, arresting, or prosecuting Twitter users pending the hearing and determination of the suit filed against the government by the Socio-Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP. The suit argues that the suspension of Twitter in Nigeria and criminalization of Nigerians using Twitter has escalated the repression of human rights and restricted the rights of Nigerians to freedom of expression, access to information and media freedom in the country. Meanwhile, the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, has said that the federal government's ban on Twitter's uh, operations was in the country's interest. Joining us uh, this evening to discuss this is Ario Dari Atoye and Leonard Ibute, uh, both uh, political analysts. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you for having us. Good to have you here. I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Dari Atoye, who's joining us via Zoom. Uh, good evening. Can you hear us? Yes, thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us. All right, so you were at the sit-in yesterday, and uh, I got to see a few of uh, the clips from that sit-in. Um, so quickly share with us what took place there and um, what your, your views are from the ECOWAS judgment to, of course, the reaction from uh, the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed. Well, thank you very much again for this opportunity. Uh, yeah, I was invited by a couple of journalists yesterday, even though when I got there and the House Committee on Information said it was an investigative hearing, not a public one. However, I insisted that as a citizen of the Republic of Nigeria, and indeed as one of the people paying the salaries of our federal lawmakers, that I have the right to make my own contribution, and I was partially allowed to do so, even though I was ruled you know, out of order by the chairman of that committee, who incidentally was the one who drafted uh, the NBC, the contentious NBC bill. I think what we heard from uh, Alagi Lai Mohammed was also in, indirectly or directly summarized by one of the lawmakers that the aggregate of what we've seen so far could be pointing to you know, a totalitarian state brewing. And it, it's important, just like I also said yesterday, I told the Alagi Lai Mohammed that no Nigerians, Nigerian that I know that has pursued independence of the media, that the media should not be censored. The media should not be gagged like Alagi Lai Mohammed when he was in opposition. Of course, the facts are there before the public. His statements are there in terms of speaking and defending the right of the media not to be censored, not to be regulated. But today, Alagi Lai Mohammed is in the saddle. And I think it is also the responsibility of Nigerians not to also allow Alagi, Alagi Lai Mohammed you know, to lead the government of General Buhari to gag Nigerians and also undermine free speech. And I must say that the, the, the ruling uh, by the ECOWAS court is a welcome development. We have to protect this democracy. And I think that ruling buttressed one thing. You know, government, government will go, government will come, but this country will remain. And it seems it's important that democracy should continue to thrive not just in Nigeria, but also in Africa. And that court actually recognized the right of Nigerians to free speech and the right of Nigerians to make use of Twitter. And such, you know, uh, uh, order was, 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 like I say, in order. And uh, some of us believe that uh, the appropriating has been done, even though uh, the government either has said that they are going to obey it, but the most important thing is that that order was made and right. was made in the overall interest of Nigeria. So, I want Nigerians, all Nigerians, to be on their guard that uh, even when Hitler was, you know, in the saddle, a lot of people praised him. The parliament and even members of his own country praised him. Some of the things he, he was doing then, but today Hitler, you know, is 
is an outcast globally. So basically, what the government is pursuing, Nigerians must not allow it. And we also have to be worried that a government that's an outgoing government is trying to gag Nigeria. It's totally unacceptable. All right. Um, hold on, Mr. Atoye. I'm going to move to Leonard Ebute. Uh, one of the statements, of course, uh, credited to the, uh, the um, Minister of Information is that um, these actions is, you know, are being taken in Nigeria's interest. Um, you know, some people, of course, agree with him. There's people who have also made statements like uh, Twitter insulted President Muhammadu Buhari and, of course, insulted Nigeria as a, as a, as a country. Um, so what's your reaction to the ruling by ECOWAS and also um, do you agree with the Minister of Information? Okay, the last question is more <coughs> difficult to answer. The first one is uh, straightforward. Um, it's a legal ruling. I'm not a lawyer. And I'm sure legal arguments were presented, analyzed, and the judges came to a good con conclusion. Uh, if the conclusion had been to the contrary, it would have been suspicious um, because there's a common sense that guides law. And so to that extent, I agree with Atoy and also with the, the court that it is one thing to say you don't want Twitter operating in Nigeria. It's a different thing to outlaw Nigerians using Twitter because it's a web platform. And to the extent I might be in Japan, I might be in Kenya, but I have a Nigerian account. And so you can, I mean, it's, it, it, doesn't really, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't really make sense from a tech point of view. And also from the point of view of the fact that Twitter is not directly a Nigerian thing, you can use Twitter to talk about America and Japan and so on. So it doesn't make sense to prosecute Nigerians for using Twitter. But it is a company, it is a business operating in Nigeria, and to that extent, the laws can apply to say for X, Y, Z reason, national security, whatever, you don't want them operational at the moment. Coming to Lai Mohammed's comments about uh, the legality of the issue or about um, um, his view on the issue, for example. Uh, that's a more difficult um, um, argument uh, from an analyst point of view. All of you would know that I'm not a big celebrator of Lai Mohammed, but we all know it is, it, is, it, is, it is undebatable that social media platforms are the highest sources of disinformation, false information, misinformation, lies, and so on. And even the ascent of the present government was built on social media lies. So it was with Trump, so it was with a lot of other um, um, agencies and peoples and institutions that use falsehood and lies and disinformation to pursue political or business objectives. So it is a truism that this medium of communication is the highest brewer of falsehood. Now, if the whole world agrees, and even the social media platforms agree that our tool, the tool they have, can be dangerous, and therefore they've put some regulatory tools in place to outlaw certain communications, ban certain communications, remove certain communications, censor certain communications as it were, why is it then difficult? Why is it then such a tenuous topic for us to agree that maybe there should be some regulatory framework around this supreme, infinitely supreme source of falsehood and misinformation and lies. I mean, this is an argument that intelligent people need to want to have. But when it looks like any regulation on social media is a violation of freedom of information, why are you regulated as Plus TV? Why is the NTA regulated? Why are newspapers regulated? We need to have authentic, true sources of truth. Knowing that if it's coming out of this agency, there is um, a, 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 a logic applied. So even if it is false, we know the logic of the lie. We know the logic of the falsehood. But when you create an, an, an avenue I, that reaches really more people than the, 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 the regular media, but it is an open source avenue where everybody puts everything they want with serious significant national security effect and even humanitarian effect, then that leaves a lot to be desired. And I All think right. intelligent arguments need to be had in that direction. Okay, so now let's have, you know, hopefully have some of those intelligent arguments. Uh, Ariel Dari, um, I know you're itching to say something. Um, he, um, Leonard Debute is speaking about some level of regulation, um, you know, not, not necessarily falling in line 100% with uh, 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 Lai Mohammed, the Minister of Information, but agrees that there should be some level of regulation and it, it shouldn't be seen immediately as gagging uh, the media. What do you think? 
I, I, I think uh, Leonard has said that he's not a lawyer. Probably you should look into the law books of the country. Definitely we found a lot of laws that actually can apply. And we have the Cybercrime Act that this government has been using, even though some of us are still contesting the Section 24 of that uh, very act. However, let me say this. I want my dear brother Leonard to tell me one single lie in the social media space like Twitter that has lasted 24 hours without being debunked. That's number one. Number two, what other countries have done is to engage Twitter further in terms of if they have some certain concern in how to properly you know, regulate or uh, how to some of its tricks, I mean, some of its rules in terms of uh, uh, sensory information that are prejudicial or that are injurious you know, to, to, to the people. And what we've seen so far is just an attempt um, to look for every opportunity to decide what the people say. And we must be very careful not to allow the president to see himself as the state, because that's exactly what happened when the tweet of a president, you know, because the tweet of a president was deleted for making what we call a genocidal remark. And now they appropriate it as, as that's of the concern of the entire country. No, it's not so. That is an authoritarian uh, authoritarianism that is brewing, and we mustn't give in into that. Possibly. So I want Leonard to understand that some of these companies, the government, I have no problem that government should engage them. I have no problem that there should be some sort of regulations nationally, but not that a regulation that to be done just because to protect the interests of the ruling elite. There is a difference between protecting the interests of the ruling class or the ruling elite and the common people. And I can, I can tell you that... Uh, not this government is not doing this simply because they love the common man, but because the ego of the president has been bruised. That was why they didn't bother when they were in the opposition. Yeah, and I mean, there was no red line when these guys were in opposition. And my brother Leonard will attest to that. They went beyond everything. If the previous government had done what they are trying to do now, probably they wouldn't have won the 2015 elections. And that's why we have to be very careful that in this country. True, true, okay. true. So uh, while, while we can have a conversation around the timing of the, of the current situation, right, that Buhari's tweets were removed by Twitter and therefore there's a reactionary measure from the government. Yeah, that's fine. That's, there, there's that's, also uh, the NSAS yeah, angle. Yeah, so, 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 so the signaling effect of that is negative and that's, that we can argue that maybe the current government doesn't have the credibility to take the current measures. That's a separate argument. Right, but if we stand on the body of truth and facts in itself, I mean, Trump was a sitting president and his tweets were censored and removed and all of that. America didn't ban Twitter because America also recognizes the good aspects of Twitter and all of that. But there are also other countries that will argue that the, 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 the depth of maturity of the American democracy and general institution to handle that kind of of, of, of whatever it doesn't exist in other nations. And my question to the lawyers and all these other guys is this. If we will insist that Twitter, Facebook, and other social media handles censor what happens on their platform, why can we not extend the same argument to say that censorship must also attract criminal charges to people that deliberately falsify, deliberately put material out there to hurt people, hurt nations, and even hurt businesses. Well, the, I think there is, there is already some of those acts you yes, know, in yes, place, yes. but so, Twitter, so, is, not, Twitter so, is not going to call the Nigerian police to arrest anybody in Nigeria. Good point. So when the Nigerian government therefore says that the actions or inactions of both Twitter and Twitter users hurts national security, and they present you, because when, when Lai Mohammed was, take, was talking yesterday, he wasn't talking about the issue that he raised, which was that uh, Buhari's uh, tweet was removed. He was saying that the suspicion from the Nigerian government is that that platform was being used to compromise Nigeria's national security. The question I expect people to have been asking me is how? What are the key areas that it has happened? And it is not the removal of Buhari's tweet that transcends national security. Yeah, Maybe they have other information that they, and I absolutely believe that forums like that actually do because that is how Boko Haram and Al Qaeda are, not, are radicalizing people. So it is, in fact, as much as I don't yeah, like like Mohammed and his what, antics and all of that, yeah. we need to actually investigate to say 
Is this true well, so, so, uh, for so, the so, problem those, moment? So on, if, we, if we remove the credibility yeah. of the federal, the current government to address this issue as they are doing it, we have a real issue at hand that yeah, any serious but, government uh, needs to address. Mr. Mr. Atoyi, you're going to step in next. Uh, I also want us to speak about the um, you know, relevance of the hearing and where you think that would lead. But you know, the, the, the presence of Twitter also exists. Twitter is also present in countries that have ISIS yes. and have Al-Qaeda and have some of all those Absolutely. countries. And they still have been able to have some level of control. So um, if we look at, you know, Wait, look, look back don't. just a little bit, you know, the challenges that the Nigerian government has had with Twitter are mostly about the NSAS protests. And then they've mentioned Namdi Kanu and, and the likes. Yeah. Ariel, quickly respond to that uh, with the time we have. And then quickly also tell us about the relevance of this hearing, where you think this will lead? Well, number one, I don't expect anything significant from this hearing because it's been a very narrow arrangement without listening to experts, listening to the public, listening sure. to lawyers, and even people, opinion holders, you know, investigating and listening to Lai Mohamed alone without allowing a public hearing is totally uncalled for. Now, sure. I just want to make clarification for my brother Leonard to understand one thing. Look at what Sheikh Gumi has been saying. Mm. Imagine it is uh, Omar, uh, Obadam Elafia that is saying the same thing that Gumi is saying. Today mm. will have been invited. So you can't trust the judgment of those people. What we must understand is that is as long as we have the Constitution, the Constitution is the supreme document. As long as the Constitution has protected someone, I don't expect us to try to strengthen this government to make some obnoxious law that will totally undermine everyone. One thing we must understand is this. The only way to counter all this falsehood in the social media space is for more people to be aware, to have agents, to always be alert with their responsibility and debunk this news. And it's been happening every day, every day without season. And there is no limit to it. You can't regulate some of these things that we're talking about. People will continue to make falsehood, will continue to say all manner of wrong things. But I can tell you is to empower and strengthen the society to become more aware, more educated, and people will be able to counter some of these things. Nobody even spread some of these falsehoods like the people in government. What do you do when a government, a government representative decides to spread falsehood? They were not going to do anything against him. Like I said, Shegumi is today telling us that uh, it, is, it is less harmful to kidnap children than for IPOP to attack or uh, allegedly attack uh, police people. It's, it's, Yet, it's not been, nothing has affected him, nothing has happened to him. Hmm. Oh, well. All right, um, let's now move on to speaking about the precedents that this sets. You know, there's people who have mentioned that this sets a bad precedent for um, future Nigerian governments. Um, you know, we, we as a people always like to do a thing where we say, well, you know, the previous government did it. Well, it happened in you know, Basanjo's time. It happened during Yaradwa's time. So, you know, we may as well ignore it now. So, do you fear that this sets a bad precedent, you know, for future governments in Nigeria after 2023, Ms. Atoe? Well, let me see. I'm not saying, uh, uh, I mean, indeed, indeed, that's why we are, Nigerians are resistant. The fact that Nigerians are resisting this period will definitely help us ahead of 2023 or post-2023. And people have to be very, very careful. When you see some certain things that are being, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am a forecaster. I, 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 I also have the capacity sometimes to reason along the line. And just like you there, everybody, when you look at some of the things, you have some of these dots together, some certain things are not gelling. For instance, a government, an outgoing government, that is hell-bent at regulating the social media and gagging free speech, and our going government that want to make uh, Loretta or Norche, you know, to put Loretta or Norche in, in INEC, and our going government that is doing some certain things that Nigerians cannot understand. We have to be very careful. However, I think that Nigerians must rise up to say no to it because this government in opposition supported Nigerians, you know, in rejecting every attempt to gag free speech. It has not started today and it's not going to stop even after this government. The most important thing is for Nigerians to come to defend their fundamental human rights. However, there must also be information for people to know how to defend their rights and also for people to be strengthened enough in terms of some of the things we're talking about here. And look, we have Plus TV Africa here. People would definitely know where to look for superior information. When there is falsehood, people sometimes will, 
you know, tune into Plus TV Africa. They want to know maybe this is true or not. They can tune into another station. And the people know how to fact check. Let's not give these things as if people only make some of these uh, I mean, uh, untruthful uh, statements without, you know, all sort of resistance. Like I said again, I repeat, no falsehood has lasted 24 hours that I know. People are always quick to debunk it, except if you don't want to listen to it. And the, the greatest problem to today that we have are from bandit. Um, Boko Haram. We, we, this government has not come out to tell us that bandits are using social media. They've not come to tell us that these bandits or Boko Haram are using the social media. They have not. The only thing is what I've seen is something like more or less like Igbophobia, where they only talked about ES, ESN and IPOP and see that's the only problem that we have here. And it's totally, un we must not allow this kind of narrative. I don't support the killing of policemen, the burning of institutions, I reject it, I condemn it. Whoever is behind it, either IPOB or ECN, they should be prosecuted and brought to book. But we must not allow this egophobia coloration. It is totally bad and unacceptable because the only thing Elijah like Lyman said yesterday was talking about ESN, IPOB, as if that is the only problem that we have as a nation. It's totally unacceptable. So, I appreciate what Plus TV Africa is doing. We, we listen to this TV station and Nigerians get educated. That is not to say we must allow this dangerous narrative of people saying that social media is bad. I, I have my concern at times, but I'm happy that people are always there. I have seen foreign media, ABC, and all of them, you know, giving news that are totally false. And they come to come and reverse themselves. That is the way it is. Now that's the point. All right. That's the point. All right. Um, Leonard, but I think you can uh, wrap yeah. up uh, so, on this so conversation. In, in a world where we think that um, any form of censorship of social media is a, an attack on free speech, is a dangerous world. Because that is a world that has recognized that this is the single biggest source of false information, misinformation, and is undoubted. It's, it's, it's fact. But... We feel that any form of regulation, any form of, from any government, yeah, I'm not talking about the credibility of the current government to regulate it. That's a different matter. We can, and, and I agree that certain things point to the fact that you need to have a moral place to stand to do certain things. But the truth is, the whole world agrees, from America to China agrees, that this is the greatest source of falsehood, disinformation, misinformation ever. But to then say that, any government that attempts through any means to, to, to at least put some sunny into it is an attack on free speech is, 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 is juvenile, in is, my view. But, because, but, but because, a... because, 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 plus TV is there as a source of truth. CNN is there as a source of truth. Channels TV is there that when they make a mistake, they come back to recant, they apologize, and all of these things. Nigerians don't watch these channels. They feed on the lies from social media. And when I say Nigerians, I mean the whole world. Oh, but you're but talking for, for about, what you're describing yes. now, it seems like 80%, 70% of the, uh, you know, the content of social media is false. And that's not true. I, I, don't, I don't know the percentage of falsehood. But on political information, that percentage is much higher than 80%. Not necessarily. Uh, well, there, if you have numbers, you can throw it at me. Well, we, you, if, we you have numbers, if, you, if you have numbers, <laughs> you can throw it at me. We both don't but, have numbers. But, but what I know yes. is that as... If you group, if you categorize other source of mass media and you put social media on one side, it is the greatest source of misinformation, falsehood, and lies. Yes, but at the same uh -huh. time... So if we agree, yeah. if, we, if we agree that that is the premise, but every other source of mass media is regulated, yet we have a phobia for regulating the greatest source of misinformation and lies, there is something deficient about that logic. See... I am no, for I free speech. I am for free speech. You know that I'm not a fan of uh, anything that affects the youth or the governments of this country, including the current government. I've been here to talk about Lai Mohammed and his position on, uh, on the NSAS pro protest before. You know that I'm not a big fan. But, and I want us as Nigerians. He says he's an outgoing government, and I absolutely agree. So why are we not looking at these whole issues in the context of a Nigeria instead of just the present government? And when we think like that, we'll probably see some sense in the fact that we cannot allow ourselves going go to setting rat holes because we don't have regulation, but we have a government that is constrained to give us national security objectives. And as a result of that, they need to now frown on certain things when we don't have enabling laws for them to do that. So those of you that are lawyers, you probably need to have a more open-minded view of these things. 
you know. um, Mr. Atoye, um, I can squeeze in 30 seconds for you to say what you think about that. Um, the fact that there is a large, you know, reasonable large amount of fake news on social media, is that enough to want it immediately regulated to some level? At all, I just want to refer my brother to uh, bullet theory. You should go and read about the bullet theory of the mass media. Probably we understand what we're talking about there. The issue of the media being accused, you know, of falsehood, of peddling falsehood, has always been there. And one thing we want people to understand is this: this social media thing is when it favors some people, it's good. When it fav when when it's not in your favor, it's bad. And we have to stop it. Whatever regulations that we need to have are already enough in the country. I disagree. The, the whole world will disagree with you on that point, um, Atoye. Go on, go on, Mr. Atoye. The whole so, world so, will disagree oh, hold with on, you on Hold that. on, please. Go on, Mr. Atoye. I, 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 I want to say this. I, like I said, I said this country has abundance laws that are regulating some of these. I've referred him to the Cyber Cry Act, Section 24. Probably you should go and read it. This government has prosecuted people based on their posting on Facebook and Twitter. They've prosecuted people. A lot of cases are in court. So that's why I don't understand what my brother there is saying. What this government is looking for is to control speech, not the censorship. If it is censorship, if there are rules, there are rules and regulations in abundance. That's why I don't understand what Leonard is saying here. People are in court being prosecuted by this same government for what they posted. People are being jailed in this same country. So it means that there are rules and there, there are laws in place. What this government wants to do is to control our speech, what to say. Don't say this and don't say that. And it's not going to all go well for us. All right. Ario Dari Atoye, thank you very much. And of course, thank you for your service also. You know, you, I, I'm guessing you're also going to continue following up with the hearings um, and uh, seeing where it leads. So thank you very much for joining us this evening on Plus Politics. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Leonard Ebute, thank you also. Yeah, thanks. Uh, uh, truly it was, appreciate it was a, it was a good, the, the little session, banter here. Yeah. There. Good to, good to hear your perspective. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, we discuss how we can reduce court and trial processes in Nigeria using Farouk Lawan as a case study. We'll be right back. <laughs>